Hi, this is Ms. Black. This is Open Campus for Math 099 at Bosch Parish Community College. We are now going to start on Module 6, which we're totally going to change gears. We're not going to be adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing this chapter. We're going to learn about what the word factor means in mathematics and how we do it related to algebra. So if y'all would please go to your class notes. something from third grade. If I ask for the greatest common factor of six and eight, what I'm asking you all is what is the biggest number you can divide both six and eight by. Now, some of you can look at that and figure out the answer in your head. Other of you need to do work. So if we go back to third grade, to find the greatest common factor, you'd first have to list the factors. Factor means to multiply. What can multiply to 6? Well, 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. Then you would do the same thing for 8. You would list the factors of 8. What can multiply to 8? That could be 1 times 8, 2 times 4. What you would then would do was look at both lists and find the largest common factor or the largest common number. And it is obvious it is the number 2. So we would say the GCF of 6 and 8 is 2. That is the biggest number you can divide both by. Well, the same thing is true in algebra. You can look at two monomials and find out what they have in common that you can divide them by. You can find their GCF. Again, if you can't look at it and do it in your head, you could sit like a third grader and list all the factors. So just to show you, if I have 14x to the fifth y, and I listed all the factors, first I would start with the coefficient. What can multiply to 14? That could be 1, 14, 2, 7. Then I'd look at each variable. Well, x to the fifth, we've already discussed this semester, means x times x times x, times x, times x. y to the first just means there's a y. So that is what would multiply to 14x to the fifth y. You would do the same thing with 21x squared y cubed. First, you list all the factors of the coefficient. What can multiply to 21? 1, 21, 3, 7. Then you would list what would multiply to x squared. And we've seen so far the only thing that multiplies to x squared is x times x. What can multiply to y cubed? y times y times y. Once we have all the factors listed, then we're looking for the greatest common factor. The biggest amount both have in common. Well, the number's easy. The biggest number they have in common is 7. 
But then if you start looking at the variables, there's five x's here and there's two here. What's the most they have in common is two. Then we're going to look at the y's. There's one y, there's three y's. What's the most they have the same in common? It's y. So we would say the GCF here is 7x times x is x squared with the y. So now I want you to notice something. We've got to play on words. If you look, the reason why we call it a greatest common factor has to do with the numbers, the coefficients, because it goes back to arithmetic. What is the biggest number you could divide 14 and 21 by? 7. But when you do a GCF of variables, it is not the bigger amount, believe it or not, is the smaller. You have x to the fifth and x squared. There's five x's here, there's two here. What do they have in common are only two. The same thing here. It's y to the first and it's y cubed. How many do they have in common is one. So we learn in algebra, the GCF of variable is not the term with the bigger exponent, it's the term with the smaller exponent. Now, let's go back to the notes for a minute. If we and look at those first the right. I want to factor this. I want to rewrite this as multiplication. It is not connected by multiplication right now. It's subtraction. So we're going to do the GCF rule. The first thing is you have to look at the terms and find out what they have in common that you could divide them by. If you look, they both have the same coefficient, 6. So that is what your GCF is. It's 6. Then you're going to put a parentheses, and in the parentheses, you're going to tell me what is left over after you divide by that 6. So we're physically going to divide both of these terms by 6. 6x six divided by 6 would be x. Negative 6y divided by 6 is negative y. This is your answer. You have rewritten algebra to be multiplication. And that's the goal of factoring. Now, what I love about factoring is you can always check to see if you did it right. Because we've already learned in the previous modules how to multiply. So let's use our distributive property. What's 6 times x? 6x. Six Got it. What's 6 times negative y? Negative 6y. Got it. Let's try another one. I have the expression y cubed minus 8y. Can't subtract them, they're not alike. But the directions say to factor. To factor doing the GCF rule, what do they have in common you could divide them by? This time it's not a number. Remember the coefficient there is 1. 1 and 8, what are you going to divide them by? 1. Well, is dividing by 1 going to change the value? No. But they do have a variable in common. This is y cubed which means three y's. This is y to the first, which is one y. If you have three and I have one, how many do we have in common? One. So when we do the GCF of variables, we take the variable with the smaller exponent. So we write the y. That's what we're going to divide them by. Then you're going to put a parentheses and tell me what's left. So we're going to divide by y. We're going to divide by y. y cubed divided by y to the first is y squared. Because remember, we subtract exponents. Negative 8y divided by y. We've already discussed this. When you divide the same variable, it cancels out. 
it leaves you negative 8. This is connected by multiplication. It is factored. You want to check yourself. Do your distributive property. Y times Y squared is Y cubed. Got it. Y times negative 8, negative 8 Y. Got it. Let's try one more. How about if I have 7X to the fourth minus 21X squared? Again, if we're going to factor, we're going to rewrite this as multiplication. What do these terms have in common? First, look at the coefficient. I have a 7 and a 21. What's the biggest number I can divide them by? Great, it's 7. So we need a 7. They also have variables. We have x to the fourth, x squared. What's the most I can divide both by? Good. When you do the GCF of variables, you do the smaller exponent, x squared. Then you put a parentheses, and you're going to tell me what's left over after you divide. So I physically write it so I can see it. Dividing, dividing. 7 divided by 7, cancel out. x fourth divided by x squared is x squared. Negative 21 divided by 7 is negative 3. And dividing the same letter cancels out. This is your answer. It is connected by multiplication. That's what factoring means. Check it, distribute. 7x squared times x squared, 7x to the fourth. 7x squared times a negative 3, negative 21x squared. So that's all there is to factoring doing the GCF rule. the board one more time. 16x minus 4. What can we divide both by? Well, it doesn't have an x, so we can't divide by a variable. Well, we can divide them both by the number 4. So the GCF is 4, so we write that in front. Then you're going to put parentheses, tell me what's left. Well, when I divide both of them by 4, look what happens. 16x divided by 4 is 4x. We know 4 divided by 4 cancels out, but here's the problem. There's a negative sign here. You can't leave a negative sign hanging without nothing behind it. So we discussed this. When everything divides out, you must put what number? 1. If you look, that 1 is connected by subtraction. And we've already discussed this. If I had a million dollars and you took away one of my dollars, it would change my value. So just remember, you always write a 1 if it's connected by add and subtract. That is not connected by multiply, so it's necessary. Also, if we check it, it checks. 4 times 4x is 16x. 4 times negative 1 gets you back to negative 4. So today we learned the easiest and the most important rule of factoring we will see throughout the next couple of modules. Hope you learned something. Have a great day. Thank you.